to variation 35. This variation is about lifting and landing the bow on an up bow and it also has a little bit of flying staccato in it. The main aspect of this variation are the up bows. We need to lift the bow, land it again, lift it again and land it again. So the best way to get used to this is to start just by practicing this on one note. The difficulty that we have is that the first time we have to lift the bow, it's still in the upper half because for a correct bow division, we should divide the bow into three equal parts. And that, of course, means that the first lifting and landing is in the upper half. And that's always a little bit tricky because lifting and landing the bow in the lower half is not a problem because our hand is comparatively close to where the bow hairs touch the string. That's where the sound is produced. In the upper half, our hand is a lot further away and the danger is always if we land the bow that it bounces because it's so light and we don't have so much control there. So that's the actual challenge in this variation. Now a very good way to get used to this and to practice it is to practice catching the string. This is actually quite a different technique because when we catch the string, we put the bow onto the string without moving it and we add weight to catch the string and then as we release we start playing. That's not what we want for this variation. For this variation we want this. We're not catching the string. But by practicing this catching the string you're practicing control and that helps. It helped me a lot to practice catching the string, dividing the bow in three equal parts and catching the string exactly where I want to land. That means that the bow has to come to a standstill, otherwise I can't catch the string. that we have is that we circumvent the problem by using a lot of bow for the first one and then lifting the bow twice in the lower half. Because that way we circumvent the problem of lifting the bow in the upper half. Now to a certain extent the first one does get more bow. But one has to be a little bit careful that one doesn't do that too much because you don't want and then you don't have enough bow down there. One always has to work towards lifting the bow as early as possible so that we are still in the upper half. I do use a little more bow for the first one so that I know that I can land it comparatively securely, but one has to strive continuously for lifting the bow sooner on the up bow so that one lifts it closer to the tip and avoids lifting it below the middle. Try to have an even bow speed like I mentioned, you do need a little more bow speed at the beginning. You do need to use a little more bow for the first one. Also because the bow is lighter in the upper half. So for a little more sound, you need a little bit more bow speed than you need in the lower half. But here again, we're striving for an as even bow speed as possible. The other thing, very important, don't lift the bow too high. When you're practicing this catching the string, that's not such a problem.
because the bow has to be brought back down onto the string and brought to a standstill before you can catch it for the next note. But as soon as you are not catching the string, don't lift the bow too high because the higher you lift it, the more difficult the landing is. Very difficult. So don't lift the bow too high. You want a continuous movement, a continuous horizontal movement. This is a lot more horizontal than it is vertical. Now to get us closer to what we need to do in the variation, it's a good idea to also practice this bowing in scales. Start off with catching the string because that is the best preparation for this bowing, even if it's very different from what we need to do. The control that we are practicing does seem to help. the bow smoothly, not catching the string anymore. Remember not to lift the bow too high, but to have a smooth horizontal movement on your up bow. And here again, strive for an even bow speed, strive for an even bow division. Like I said, it's okay to use a little more bow for the first one, but that's not what we should practice. We should practice moving at an even speed with an even bow division and strive to lift the bow further in the upper half. That's what we're continually practicing. Now we also have a little bit of flying staccato in this variation and we've had some variations with flying staccato and I go into more detail about the flying staccato in variations 28, 30 and 33. I'll have the links in the description for you so if flying staccato is new for you I would suggest to take a look at those variations and practice flying staccato a little bit first because I'll just go over it briefly here. With flying staccato we need this movement and the preparation for flying staccato is a complete circle of the bow where we stay in one place. By staying in one place one can go on forever. It's a very small movement. The bow comes down onto the string on its own, thanks to gravity, and it also goes back up again because of the tension in the hairs. Our only job is to make sure that it stays in one place. That's the movement in slow motion enlarged. That becomes a passive movement reacting to the bow. It's very difficult to actually see the complete movement. It's a good idea to tilt the bow towards the fingerboard a little bit because then you will land softer. Remember, tilting the bow towards the fingerboard reduces the tension on the hairs. We also need that for our up bows. If we play with all the hairs, with the stick above the hairs, it will bounce because there's too much tension on the hairs. So we need to tilt the bow towards the fingerboard. And for these repeated notes, that's also very important. That's the preparation for flying staccato. The next step is to allow the bow to travel a little bit. because you're not doing the full circle anymore. 
So as soon as you allow the bow to travel, it feels like it's much easier. An added difficulty that we have is that in this variation, the left hand also has quite a lot of work to do. We're shifting around a lot. So you need to spend quite a bit of time practicing the left hand so that it is so secure that you can completely rely on your fingers being able to do it because you need your concentration for the bow. So practice the left hand and secure the left hand. And like I said, it's not quite easy. One way to do this is to keep the bow on the string. That way you're also practicing the connection between the nodes. The middle part of this variation is actually the most challenging for the left hand. Not for the bow. The bow is doing the same thing all the time. But if you notice you're having more trouble with the middle part of the variation with your bow, that's not because it's more difficult for the bow. That just will mean that you haven't secured the left hand enough. practicing it just like that, connecting the notes, securing the left hand. The nasty thing is that the intonation is not so easy because we have these repeated notes after shifts and they have to be in tune. Everybody can hear if it's not quite the same note. So don't underestimate the challenge of the left hand in this variation. When putting right and left hand together, it's a good idea to practice that catching the string. I did that a lot because the catching of the string helped my bow with the control, particularly in the upper half. And the other added advantage is that it allowed me to practice this slowly because the bowing, as we have to do it, we can't do slowly. We can't go... We can do that, but it's too far away from what we need to do. So when you want to practice it slowly, I would recommend rather practice it catching the string. And I always use this opportunity when I practice catching the string to be careful to use not so much bow for the first one because like i mentioned earlier we have to strive to have an even bow division we'll always have a little more bow for the first one and that's okay but if we don't continuously strive for an even bow division lifting the bow earlier in the upper half closer to the tip if we don't strive for that eventually we'll have so we have to be careful, we have to work against that. And by practicing catching the string, that's an excellent opportunity to get used to an even bow division. So I spent a lot of time practicing this variation, catching the string, and it gave me a lot of time to also practice it slowly for the left hand. The flying staccato bars start off with staying in one place. That's an excellent preparation to each staccato one four times and stay in one place. And then do each one twice. And then allow the bow to travel and play the original as it's written. 
and that will feel very nice and free and easy because you can use the whole bow you're allowing the bow to travel that's the much easier bowing than the staying in one place So the flying staccato here, we don't have many flying staccato notes, but they do need a little bit of attention. It can also help to practice each one individually, first catching the string and then not catching it. And then practice that a few times. as well because the catching of the string gives me a bit of control in the upper half the bow division is better and usually if I practice them after each other catching the string not catching the string catching the string not catching the string that seemed to help my control and it also seemed to help my bow division remember not to lift the bow too high we can't go there's no control we stay quite close to the string in this variation much more horizontal than vertical another thing we have to be careful with is the precise rhythm we have 30 second notes and then a 16th note wrist the danger is that it turns into 16th notes not what we want we want so the rest has to be as long as the two 30 second notes it can actually help once or twice just to practice it like this because then we get a little bit of an idea of the relationship of the notes and the rests very important do not allow yourself to turn this into 16th notes, but very sharp and crisp 32nd notes. And then we have. So the rhythm is something one also has to continuously be a little bit careful because it's so easy to turn it into 16th notes and not notice. So one has to be continuously aware of the fact that we have 32nd notes here. Okay, I hope you find this helpful. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and have a good time practicing this variation.